Hello and welcome to this video. This is a video in which I uh, point out or expose the weaknesses or inefficiencies or deficiencies in the whole beat metronome practice system as taught by Wim Winters. This is also known as the double beat theory or the whole beat theory, however you want to call it. First of all, let me say that I am in total agreement with Wim Winters on, um, on the fact that there were composers who did use double beat. So I'm not opposed to double beat. I do believe it was used based on my research. However, it was a highly deficient system. It was a primitive system in which limited composers or those that gave metronome marks from finding appropriate speeds for the music. It was a primitive system, which eventually, you know, I'm not sure when, but I'm estimating sometime perhaps later in the mid to later 19th century was just replaced by our modern day single beat method. And uh, so th this is a video in which I'm going to just talk about one little piece to show you the weaknesses and really expose this this uh, whole beat metronome practice, which, which is, it's a primitive system. I, I believe it was in use, but it was primitive. And that can explain why, especially like composers like Beethoven <clears throat> gave such crazy speeds, like in the Hammer Clavier Sonata. These can be easily explained when you really <laughs> dissect the system and look at it from a, a pure logical and mathematical perspective. So here's, here, here's what I'm gonna do today in this video. I'm just focusing on one piece, one little piece of music, a minuet in F major by Mozart. Okay, Mozart wrote this when he was uh, about six years old. So uh, let's say, let's just assume, let's just assume that um, the ideal speed for this is 108 beats per minute. That's in single beat. So I'm gonna put the metronome on 108. I'll just play a little bit of this. I have the first phrase up here on the, on the board. many of you have played or taught this piece for those who know piano it's a nice graceful little minuet by Mozart okay let's just assume uh, for the for the sake of this video let's assume that the ideal performance speed or dance speed is 108 beats per minute single beat now suppose you were uh, a piano editor, let's say in the year 1830, and you were using the double beat system, which you had learned from perhaps from Maelzel's uh, instructions that he gave in 1816. Okay, so you were, you were preparing a piano edition of this Mozart minuet, and you have to supply a tempo for it using the double beat system. That's the only system you know as, you know, of living and working in 1830. Let's just say you're living in Vienna, okay? So you're in 1830 Vienna, you're an editor of Mozart's uh, piano music, and you, are, you want to indicate that speed that I just played, 108 beats per minute. How would you do it? Okay, well, according to the double beat system, 108 times two is 216. The metronome only goes to 208. Okay, so <laughs> there's a big roadblock right there. What do you do? What, what do you do? You can't indicate the proper speed for this because it, 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 it exceeds the limit of the metronome. Well, what do you do? 
So let's say, <clears throat> let's say you do this. Let's say you, let's say you put it, well, it doesn't go to 216. I can't do that. You know, so I'm going to put, I'll put it on 200. Okay, so, so let's say you just um, fudge a little bit. Okay, that, that's what it would be on 200. Okay, now, you edit Mozart's piece, you put quarter note equals 200 on it. You send it to your um, publisher. The publisher looks at it and he says, we, we can't use this speed. Two, 200 is going to scare away all the piano students from playing this. Piano teachers won't know what to do. This is a very fast speed, 200. You need to just bring the speed down a little bit so it will be more palatable and friendly to piano students. So, you as the editor, okay, well, you know, I want to get this thing published. So, well, let's just say 152. That's a good speed. So let's put it on 152. Oh, that's perfect. That's a perfect speed. For piano students, I can put that on there. My publisher will be happy. It's only 152. It's not like 200. It doesn't look really scary by having a high number there. So 152, that's pretty good. I'll put that. So, so he puts 152 for quarter note for Mo Mozart's Minuet. And then 200 years later, we assume that, oh, this has to be the authentic minuet tempo because this tempo was on here and they used double B. Do you see the fallacy? Do you see the fallacy behind it? The only reason that number is there, the only reason it's 152, is because of the limits of the metronome. And you don't want to scare away piano students by putting something 200. Do you ever notice how virtually all the historic metronome speeds, they're only at the very highest in the 180s. At the one, and usually they're somewhere in the 150s or 160s. Sometimes even in the 130s. So seen in that light, it, it becomes very obvious that the fast, some of the faster tempi were, had to have been put down put slower in order to make it more practical for pianists. Now, could this possibly be the reason for the, so, so this, this, the um, editor here put it on 152 to be nice to pianists. Well, look at, what do, you, what do you know? The first Bergmuller piece that I've been talking about, 152. Okay, how, how do you know? How do you know that Bergmuller didn't want this piece faster than 200? Well, we don't. But you can't assume that he wanted 152, just the same way as the editor of this Mozart Menuet. If he has to fudge it a little and put it down to be nice to pianists, well, don't you think that Bergmuller could, could have easily fallen into that trap? I mean, do you really think that out of all these 25 pieces in the Bergmuller Opus 100, do you really think that there was never any piece played faster than 104 beats per minute? That, that would be ridiculous. So you, you have to understand these numbers, these metronome numbers, especially in faster pieces, are had to be modified because the metronome only goes to 208. And they avoid, try to avoid numbers 200 or even in the 190s. So that means that, that if you're taking these speeds literally, you're, you're missing the point entirely. Missing the whole entire point. So 
This minuet by Mozart, simple minuet written when he was six, is impossible to notate in the double B system. Well, let's say, uh, I, I'll take that back. It is possible another way, but that has to be ruled out because it's highly impractical and it wouldn't, no pianist would be able to do it. So the other option is that the composer or the editor, let's say the editor in 1830 Vienna, could have figured out, okay, well, if it's 108 per, if it's 108 per, per quarter note it, in, in terms of single B, then it's going to be, per measure, it's going to be dotted half note equals 36. This means that the double B the double beat tempo would be 72, dotted half note equals 72. But here's the problem. The problem is if you put it on, if, if you mark dotted half note equals 72, then this, this would have require the piano student. And we're, we're talking like grade two, grade one or two piano student here. That requires the grade one or two piano student to put the metronome on 72 and to play one beat here and one beat exactly in the middle between that, in the middle. It, it, in other words, it would have to be a two against three polyrhythm. So the, that's the only other option. It's possible, but we have to rule that out because that just, is that's far, far too much to expect a piano student to do. I, mean, I can understand if it's Elliot Carter or some advanced 20th century music and you're dealing with, uh, you know, a pianists who are highly trained, perhaps, you could do a metronome mark like that, but not in a piece like this. Um, the only other option would be triple beat. Triple B, which would, would mean that the dotted half note equals 108. So if it were in triple B, the editor in 1830 Vienna would write dotted half note equals 108, and that would mean the player would put it on 108, and it would tick three times per measure. That's, that's the only thing that works. That's the only thing that really works. That's possible, but the thing is, you never see that in any historic metronome marks. You never see triple beat. And none of the people who talk about double beat, the double beat purists, ever talk about triple beat. So triple beat wasn't used. So that leaves us no other options. Absolutely no options. Can, can you believe that? Th this is why the whole beat metronome practice, which was in use, I believe, that this, this is why it's a deficient and primitive system. Because you, you, there, you can't indicate speeds basically faster than Andante for most pieces because it exceeds the limit of the metronome. You, you have to exclude two against three polyrhythms because no pianist can play that. We have to exclude triple beat because apparently that wasn't used either. I mean, if triple beat was used, that's that's a good option. But it, it, from what I see, it's, it wasn't used. So where does this, where, what does this do? This, this totally invalidates this system. The system was used, but it was so highly deficient and primitive, composers, just couldn't mark the right metronome marks. Now, I'm planning maybe in the near future a video on the second movement of Beethoven's Hammer Clavier Sonata. It's in three, four time, it has triplets in it and quadruplets, and it's very much like this. So if you analyze the second movement of Beethoven's Hammer Clavier and you can, it becomes very evident that Beethoven didn't know what the hell to do. I mean, he didn't know what the hell to do, so he put 80. I mean, 
uh, Meltzel said, if you don't know your tempo, just put 80 and then experiment from there. So in the second movement of the Hammer Clavier Sonata, Beethoven just said, he couldn't figure it out because there's no way of doing it using the double beat system. It's so primitive. So Beethoven just chose 80 as sort of a panic button. Oh, I'll just put 80 and, you know, I, I can't find the right speed for this thing, so I'll just put 80. That's what Beethoven did in the Hammer Clavier. The way, the same way somebody would try to fudge around with this to try, try to put a metronome on. It does not work. Any way you dice it or slice it, you cannot indicate a speed for this, anything that's faster than 104 beats per minute in single beat. That, that tells us this system that they used in the early days of the metronome was deficient and primitive. So there's no reason, I, I mean, there's, there's all the reason that it was replaced later with our modern day single beat system. So if you're, if you're a proponent of the double beat system, you have to think about these things. Think about these things very hard. This is why it's dangerous just to assume a metronome speed because they had to fudge around and they had to put it lower than it should really be because the metronome's limits. They couldn't indicate things in compound meters and many triple meters, anything faster than basically 104 beats per minute for, for a fast beat. There's a big problem here. It's a primitive system which Composers realized that and eventually it was replaced. I don't know exactly when it was replaced or who did it, but I'm certain that sometime in the 19th century, they realized how primitive and inefficient the system was and it was replaced. So that's my lesson today. Stay tuned for another video in which I expose the inefficiencies or the deficiencies in the whole beat metronome practice system.